This is Spielman on Sports. Sponsored by the Toy Barn. All right, Spielman on Sports back in studio. How's it going, buddy? Doing great. Good to see you. All right, so we're getting closer to all this. Hey, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, everyone wants to know, you know, Noah, we talked about his, uh, you know, he's getting to be bigger than you now. I mean, what's his high school career? How's that going? Well, uh, he's doing well. He's a two-way starter at Upper Arlington, and he plays hard, and he does a good job. And, you know, the interesting thing and the phenomenon that I'm noticing is that being on the road, I missed a lot of games last year. He got to play a lot of defensive tackle last year. Let's see two or three games. And I'm watching. I got to see two scrimmages this year in the opener, and I get to see the next two games, which is exciting for me. But I, I, I thought that it was, an, it was interesting for me to notice myself and how I am in the stands. And I think back, and I don't know if other parents that were played football at a high level or any sport at a high level watching their children. I imagine all parents feel like I do. But it is just pure torture. I enjoy it, and I hate it all in one. And I hate it because I know, maybe I know too much. And somebody noticed me in the stands, and they said, don't you sit down ever <laughs> during a game? And so what I found myself doing, I found myself basically perched in the corner, walking up and down the steps, trying to give him hand signals, not doing what his coaches would never tell him to do, but sometimes he looks up, and I'll, I'll just say get lower or something like that. And it's – uh. It's been interesting for me. Um, more different, I think, than watching my daughter when she was a high school basketball player. I mean, I, I know a little bit about basketball, but uh, and watching my little ones do their softball, basketball, or, or soccer, or whatever it may be, because I don't know as much. But when you're in it and you know so much, and you know that uh, for whatever reason, football has a special place in my heart, that it's, it's, it's more difficult than I ever anticipated. Do you think that – it sounds like he is obviously uh, yearning for your advice, but do you think he plays under a certain uh, – a different kind of pressure yeah, to live does. up to you? We've talked about that. and Especially when you're pacing because then yeah. he knows that maybe you not, expect more of him than – Not from me because uh, – and I'll be completely honest with you, which I think I've always been over these airwaves, is that I've always held him to a very high standard. And that's the standard that he set and that he's capable of reaching. Frankly, I don't know how good he can be. I think he's a very good high school football player and only going to get better over the next two years. Is he college material? Well, time will answer that question. I think he has an opportunity one day at some level. I know he can play at the next level at some level. I don't know what level yet. But for me, I taught them at a very young age. For whatever reason, we've been in the spotlight, whether it's uh, Stephanie's name, whether it's my name, that people are going to see the last name, and they're going to watch. I mean, I go to games all the time, and there's people that come up to me, what number is your son? And I know he's being watched, and I know that uh, opponents, in the spirit of the game, whether you agree with it or not, try to get under his skin. And he's got to be mentally tough. And I always tell him that all you have to do is be Noah. And the only thing that's ever expected from you is effort. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get you're going to get beat once in a while. You're also going to make your share of plays. But for me, for you cannot get rabbit ears. You can't listen to what other folks say. All you have to do is play at the level that you're capable of playing. That you're your own person. You're not me. I don't want you to be me. You're Noah Spielman, and it's time to take ownership of what you do on the field. And for the most part. Uh, he's done that in an admirable way. I'm very proud of him. And from ha- from that point of view, yes. ESPN, a lot of national outlets have been doing this uh, series on that football is at a crossroad at a, at a lot of levels. Mm-hmm. And high school football now, we've always wanted the kids to be taught how to fundamentally tackle, head up, you know, right. eyes that, you know, and, and, and avoid know. serious. Right. And I, avoid, I invented it. <laughs> <laughs> avoid, you know, serious injury. And I got to ask kidding. you, there are some, there are some, uh, former player greats like yourselves that that have been on the record saying, you know what, I would never steer my son away from it, but if he didn't want to play, it wouldn't bother me that much. Like now that they know what they know, and it, they can't control it because it's their son playing. Um, how do you feel about where high school football and where football is right now, as far as concussions right. and what they should do to protect people? Are we changing the culture of the game? Should we not be changing the culture? It's violent inherently. How do you feel? Well. First of all, I would be disappointed if he didn't play. Not disappointed in him. 
disappointing and I think what the uh, the important lessons that football does teach that I think it teaches so much more than all other sports that's just my opinion uh, but I wouldn't be disappointed in him and I would I would never hold it against him and I would support him in his decision but if I want to be honest in my heart I would be a little saddened that he wouldn't get the experience what this great game teaches um, being a parent and going to high school meetings and the precautions that are taken by high schools now and the fact that they have the physicians uh, heavily involved, the fact that they have baseline tests for high school players, that they're overly cautious in a good way, especially when it comes to head injuries in children, I feel completely comfortable and safe uh, with the way high school football is and is being played. I think coaching is vital. I think coaches need to be uh, aware, and I don't know if there's a way to uh, govern that, but you have to trust coaches that they are, are taking their job as a profession and that they're professionals at what they do, and it is their obligation to the children and to the players that are playing this game to teach the proper, safe fundamentals of the game and hold their players accountable for playing it clean and playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. And for parents that struggle with this, I would give you this piece of advice. And I, and I go through the same struggles as every other mom and dad out there when their son plays football. I mean, I go to church on Fridays and pray for his safety, specific stop on, on church on Friday, just to pray for, pray for his safety in the game and all the players in the game. I don't want to see anybody hurt. But you have to educate yourself on is your school prepared to happen if there's something that happens to your child, uh, if it gets hit in the head. Are there baseline tests? Do they have to pass a series of tests before they allow that player on the field? And educate yourself on the risk and educate yourself on the reward. And I did the same thing. I went through a checklist. And to me, the reward of the game of football uh, and what it teaches in life far outweighs the risk. And I have a tremendous amount of trust in the, in the people that are responsible for his health when he's at the football field. And if you do that, you'll make a good decision. One way or another, whatever you decide is right for you and your your child. Yeah, I you went and that's great advice. You went through a lot. You've had a ton of injuries, serious injuries, that sort of thing. I never really asked you. I mean, how many concussions did you have, or do you even know? Well, I just was on a, um, the phone with a dear friend of mine, and he starts the conversation out like this: uh, "What's up, Rockhead?" And the reason why he called me Rockhead was that I've had broken fingers. Uh, Parts of my shoulder removed. Uh, uh, I have an artificial hip. I have a neck fusion. And he said that because, and, and he went through my litany of injury or my list of injuries mm -hmm. and said, but the only guy that I know that's never had a concussion, and I never had a concussion. I never once uh, been diagnosed. I never felt the effects of a concussion. I never felt like I lost uh, where I was, who I was, what I was doing. And I took some shots to the head. I mean, big shots to the head. So I don't know. A doctor will probably call and correct this, and please do. And I hope mm -hmm. you would read the correction on email or over the phone if somebody calls. But I just have an, a, a layman's opinion that I do believe some people are genetically predisposed to concussions. Like some people might be genetically predisposed to knee injuries. I don't know what kind of uh, blow they can absorb to the head. For me... I have a very hard head, and I've had one ever since I could remember, which I can remember back to when I was two. So there's another proof that I never had a concussion. <laughs> the guys, and in all seriousness, the guys that played the game at your level that have suffered this, and now there's all this, you know, there, there are lawsuits out there, and guys sure. that are suing the NFL based upon there's a fine line between knowing the risk and then feeling that maybe the NFL had more knowledge about putting guys back in the game and how serious this is. Um, I can't say that's true. I don't know. I can only speak from my experience. No matter the injury and what I witnessed over my 11 years in the National Football League was that I always felt that the doctors had the best interest of the player in mind. I know in my case who was a, a nut job, crazy man to deal with as an injured player because I would try to um, tell them I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Then I couldn't pass the test and they say, no, you're not fine. And so they would not let me play. They would not let me practice because I remember asking one doctor this specific question. We were in a, a room alone, and I said, Doc, be honest with me, please. 
And he said, Chris, I've been honest with you since the day I met you. I said, whose interest do you have in mind? Do you have my interest in mind or do you have the team's interest in mind? He said, I can say 100% that I don't know about any other doctors, but for me, the player or the patient always, always comes first. And I got to believe that's the, the, um, the case for most of the teams and the physicians. And plus, yeah. the, the NFL knows so much more. And we as a society and, and physicians know so much more about the treatment, cause, and care for concussions than we did 20 years ago. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. So, I, I guess what I wanted to get from you are, do you think these lawsuits are, are bogus? Do you think they have some merit to them as each individual case – should be studied on its own, or how do you? I feel? think each individual case should be studied on its own. Absolutely, I think again, teams in the NFL um, maybe they've been a little slow in getting started because of the power and the money that they have to do these studies and the care for for the the, the players in their league. Uh, they've educated themselves, and I just was speaking with Rick the other day, my brother, mm-hmm. about this, and and the 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 before a player steps out on the field. He has to pass a, a lot of tests before they even think about letting him play. And maybe there's a little bit of a mindset change in the year 2012 as opposed to 1972 or 75 yeah. or even 82 or 88 when I first popped into the league. I'm sure there's a little bit more of a mindset change. One, because I think it's just uh, the right thing to do. And, and two, when you have $10, $15, 20000000 million invested in a guy, you're not going to use him up in the first yeah. year if you don't have to. All right, in the final minute we have with you, and I, I wish we could go for an hour on this because I find it really fascinating. Do you feel like – do you still watch the NFL? Do you feel like they're doing too much to protect the offensive player? Or do you think do you think the game is in a, in a fork in the road now, or do you think, hey, it's, it's still okay? They're making – how do you feel about it? Are they protecting I think as people long as they, they keep adjusting. I think, to me, um, I do think they protect the wide receivers down the field a little bit too much, uh, to be honest with you. I get the whole quarterback thing. The thing that um, I worry about is that, you know, a lot of times offensive players initiate contact or there's contact or collisions occur in a split second, and guys are so big and so fast and so athletic that you do not, you can't avoid coming and hitting head to head with a guy. It just happens. I mean, what's you're a fan yeah. of the Vikings, right? right. And Adrian Peterson. Does he ever use? If you want, does he ever use his head as a weapon as an offensive player? Yeah, I does mean, he, he ever he, lower himself? Absolutely. Yes, he, he does. And have we ever seen a penalty called on an offensive player using his head as a weapon or, or his helmet as a weapon? It's instinctual, and it's also an advantage, right? You want to get lower. You want to become less of a target. Well, you want to become the aggressor. Even when I coached little league and 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 coaching. Or just advising mm-hmm. my son. The the one thing, like I'll throw things or send text through text to him throughout the day. Low man always wins. So, Low man always wins. I grew up in Chicago watching yeah. Walter Payton do it. Yeah, all the time. So I, but I do think that you know, they have to be very careful about over legislating the collision yep. of what draws people to the game. It's the ooh hit that draws people to the game as long <laughs> as it's clean and. Sometimes you have to launch yourself. I mean, look at the size of receivers. They're 6'3", 240 pounds, and they're running. And if you don't <laughs> come in with intentions to take this man down, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. And it's just we just got to be careful and, and not over-legislating this game. Great stuff, Chris. Have a great week. We'll talk to you on the Tailgate Show on Saturday. Thank you. Spielman on Sports. Sponsored by the Toy Bar. Hear it here three times a week on the Big Show. Common Man in the Tour plus the Buckeye Show. Sports Radio 97.1 The Fan.